This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st Century. We All Be is honored to have on the one and only Sister Jennifer P. E. Wilson, who is the owner and visionary behind Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center Incorporated. The only, the last black-owned bookstore in all of Harlem, USA. How you doing today, sister? I'm doing wonderful, brother. Yeah, I'm, actually, how did you come up with this idea to start a bookstore? How did you get into this record or this business? Uh, basically, um, it came from my inherent um, self as a youngster growing up in Georgia. Uh, as a youngster, I felt invisible actually growing up because I did not see any depiction of any black folk, any folk who looked like me in any of the books that we were studying from. And so I bought, I, I was a dreamer, so I always dreamed and always thought of, you know, ways and means to embrace who I, who I am and who I was at that time. So um, at an early age, my latter teens, I was uh, sent to New York City because I was a rebel in the South. And so I moved to Sugar Hill, uh, which is now called Washington Heights, but it'll always be Sugar Hill. So once I moved here, I uh, always ventured into Harlem, the richness of Harlem back in the early 80s, 90s, and uh, 2000. And so there was a bookstore on 125th Street and Lenox Avenue called the Tree of Life. And the Tree of Life was a safe heaven. It was a safe place where our elders in the community uh, were congregate on a regular basis and talk about current events and what was happening in our community, what happened pre-colonial, what was happening in our current and in our past. And so it was folk like um, Malcolm that was doing that era when, and when they were out on those ladders on 125th Street and, and Lenox Avenue talking about us as a people and who we were and how proud we were. So I just became a visionary and a dreamer of our history and who we were as a people. And so I, I believe that was when my assignment uh, came uh, to be a visionary and to embrace the history of our culture and, and, and represent it and be the person in the community where I chose to live uh, to present it, to house it, to present it, and preserve it. So that's actually how I came about uh, becoming a visionary for Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center back in January of 2000. Wow, that's excellent. I, you, you mentioned Malcolm. I know you said you were able to see Malcolm on 125th Street. And Malcolm had a place back in the day, the Michelle Bookstore, that he was able to go to to do his research. Mm -hmm. And now, with the advent of the internet, of course, you got you know things at your fingertips. But what is so important to have a place like this where people can come, uh, people of melanated descent, African descent? Why is it so important to have a place like this still in Harlem? I think basically because it's a place where we can do the same as the elders back then. Uh, talk about things that we can't normally talk about at church or in other settings like a Barnes and Nobles or um, I mean you can talk in the barber shop or and we go to get our hair done or, or certain places but we certainly can't talk in church we can't talk in um, other establishments about our inner feelings our innermost feelings as a group of people so this sort of is like a safe house where we can come and congregate and really talk about what we're really feeling and then find a text that will relate to it from the 1800s and here we are in 2016 and a lot of stuff is still happening in our community so i think this is a safe place it's a place it's one of the few places where we can actually come and be and be free to be. Uh, so I think that's what's key about uh, this institution. 
do you feel that black people are reading uh, today as they were maybe 15 or 20 years ago? Are black folks still reading books or reading anything? I certainly do think that we're not reading as much as we have re read in the past because folk are saying, oh, the digital is what's happening, but I don't think it's digital. I've been in observation mode over the last 16 years. I know elders still read the newspaper and magazines. If we had Jet Magazine and, you know, black newspapers like the Amsterdam News or the Beacon News, which houses what's going on in our community, the elders are reading that information. They may not read as many books, but they're still reading. And so I think our youth are not reading as much because they're in a mode of mind control because the, the digital is controlling their minds. But there are young folk who are graduating from college who are intellectuals or now they're reading and they'll tell you that they want to still fill a book. They want the fill of a book, a page turner. Um, so elders are still reading, uh, young college graduates are reading. One thing that I've learned is that our, the brothers in the community are not reading as much. I think part of what happens is we get we're caught up in survival mode. So surviving doesn't allow you the time and the energy to concentrate on pleasure reading because reading is pleasure. It teaches, it takes you to places and spaces in your mind and in your spirit where you can imagine, you can dream, you can become. So I think books are a pertinent part of our culture and the reason so many of us are not reading is not digital, it's because folk just, are, we are distracted with so many different things, our jobs, how are we gonna live, how are we gonna survive. So folk actually, by the end of the day, are too tired to crawl up in the bed and take a book and read for hours. So I think that's the distraction, and I think once people realize that distractions are just what they are, and there's such a luxury and a pleasure in reading, that a lot of people are going to get back to basics and read again. Oh, excellent. So also, I want to ask you this as well. What do you feel about the young people right now? I mean, how do they compare from like, like this, when you was young versus now in terms of uh, being thirsty or want to acquire that knowledge of self or any type of information? Well, I think young people are actually going to be the catalyst of our movement in terms of us as a culture. And what it is is there's a disconnect. They're not, the elders in the community, we've not done our due diligence to the, the youth because there, there was a responsibility that we had to bridge the generational gap of uh, the civil rights era uh, the new, uh, and Jim Crow era. We didn't do that. They're not being taught that in school. So the fact that we didn't bridge that gap and bring forth the information to um, enhance the growth of our communities when we were community of self has left our youth basically destitute because they don't have a clue now. They're totally confused. They're not connected to us as elders. And so it's going to be left up to the elders to heal, to reclaim our seats, and, get, and, and, and bridge the gap with the youth so that they can then take the, the torch from us and be the, the clear movement of, of, of our future. They are our future, but they're, 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 they need to, the, the bridge has to be gapped. Interest, like, I, I mean, it has to be, uh, it has to be made whole, not gap. The gap has to be made whole. 
it's interesting to think about, like, you know, there's not too many, like, bookstores owned by black people left in this country, period. And they have a place like Harlem won't have one black owned book bookstore with such a rich and significant, you know, black history narrative. Um, how has, it's mind boggling, isn't it? It is mind boggling. I won't say yeah. how, how tough it is to hang in there. I mean, you've been in 15 years. 16 years. These 16 thing, years. Yeah, the thing is, I, I read a few years ago, there, nationwide, there are 300 black owned bookstores. Mm -hmm. To this date, we're down to about 50 black owned bookstores nationwide. And to be the only black owned bookstore in Harlem with so many black folk in New York City is actually mind boggling. And then to not be supported in the way that we should be. We should not be struggling mm -hmm. as a black owned bookstore because we as people, as black people, are consumers. We're spending, consuming $1.5 trillion a year. Our money stays in our community six hours compared to other ethnicities where their money is in their community 30 days. So I think part of what has happened to us is we, um, the true essence of support, supporting our own and supporting ourselves was left out of our equation. I think we, we will spend money. We don't care where we spend it, who we spend it with. It doesn't matter if it's a black owned business. So I think once we get back to basics and realize that when you support a black owned business, you're supporting yourself. You're supporting supporting your community. I think we don't have an attachment to that. We don't we don't know the validity, the value of supporting you. And I think that was deliberately left out of our equation. But I think there are enough of us who are waking up and who are becoming conscious that we'll get it. And I believe we'll get it now. So if people want to support what you're doing as a wonderful institution in the community, what do we need to do? How do we get in contact or what can we find you? Well, we've been in the same location. Some folk are like, well, I didn't know about you. We've been in the same location, 1942 Amsterdam Ave, Amsterdam Ave on the corner of 156th Street uh, for the last 16 years. And uh, you can reach us at 212-862-3680. Uh, um, we have a Facebook page. You go to Sisters Uptown. Uh, we have a Twitter page. Um, my, my daughter, Corey, is in charge of all the social networking, so we're up to date on that. And so you just go to Sisters Uptown. You Google Sisters Uptown, and you'll be able to connect to all of our social entities as well as you can call us Monday through Saturday. We're open from 12 noon to 8 p.m. And we're open to the public for any forum uh, that they may want to present. If you're a poet, if you're an artist, uh, the Cultural Center is uh, a place where you can come and present whatever your gifts are. Thank you, Sister Jennifer, so much. you have any final thoughts you want to share or yeah, I, I, I really do believe that um, we as a people are actually go, going to get it this time. Um, more and more of us are becoming conscious and awakening to the plight of us as a people. But I think before we can heal the nation and the universe, we will need to heal ourselves. We will heal ourselves because we've not healed. Uh, there are a lot of us who don't like being dark and having the hair or the skin color that we have. And I think once we can embrace and start to love us as a people, and love ourselves, uh, that's going to be our plight to freedom. Uh, the ancestors have left all of the information in books. So I think once we start to read and become indoctrinated with our own culture, that's going to free us. One thing folks said when I opened 16 years ago, they said, she ain't going to make it because black folk don't read. 
well enough black folk are reading that we're still here and we don't plan on going anywhere. So I'm grateful for the folk who've come over the last 16 years and I know there are more to come and they're going to come and they're going to make suggestions and we're going to embrace who we are and we're going to keep this, this plight going. I, I think we can um, embrace and take Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center to every state that doesn't have a black-owned bookstore. And then that's going to be the, the freedom and the plight uh, for our future. Thank you so much, Sister Jennifer, the owner and visionary of Uptown, of oh, Sisters Uptown Bookstore and Cultural Center. In the words of Greg DeVille, we love you madly. Keep on producing and pushing. Thank you, brother. Yeah.